welcome back to my channel. This is the yin yoga practice for our second chakra. We are on the sacral chakra, or the svadhisthana chakra that is located in the pelvic bowl area associated with the color orange. It represents the element water and is associated with flow, creativity, sexuality, sensuality, our emotions and how we relate to other people. Um, so this, if you haven't uh, done any of the other videos associated with the chakras that have come out, I'll link below the root chakra yin video and the vinyasa flow video as well as the vinyasa flow for your sacral chakra. We're gonna do a very hip opening focused yin routine today as uh, the pelvic bowl, the hip area is where the second chakra is located. And of course, I can't promise that this is going to uh, completely open up forever your second chakra. There's so many vast uh, diverse ways to open your second, second chakra and this is just one way of kind of focusing our energy on that area of our body. And of course, if you'd like to uh, read more about it, I will link below where I found my information, um, uh, the book that I'm reading and uh, a website that's very helpful and very direct with bullet points so it's easy to understand. I'll start off by doing a quick card pull as I do for most of my yin flows. Something that we can focus on uh, while we are in the poses. Parental care. I got this from the Butterfly Oracle Deck for Life Changes. So parental care actually has a big, big influence on whether or not our second chakra, our sacral chakra is blocked or overactive because during childhood, and I believe it's um, eight months, is when you start really developing um, aspects of your second chakra. Um, so a big, big influence is the parental care and how they viewed sexuality and how they related to others and how they dealt with emotions. Like if, if emotions were repressed um, in your house, if you weren't allowed to feel them without being shamed, um, vice versa the other way, if everyone was super emotional and everyone just, um, blew off the handle all the time with anger and um, tears and a lot of drama, that's going to affect how you relate to people and how you relate to the world and how you feel about yourself inside and how you feel that you're allowed to express your emotions. So definitely something to look into if you're interested. Um, other than that, let's start in wide-legged child's pose. We're going to take our knees to the corners of our mat, placing our feet together underneath our um, hips, and then walk our hands out nice and slow till you come down onto your chest or your forehead to the mat. I will say if this is too much for you, you can place blocks or pillows um, beneath your chest and that'll help take some of the pressure off of your hips in this pose. We're gonna be here for a few minutes, so make sure to get comfortable and don't be scared to use props. Nice deep breaths in and out of the nose here.
You can slowly press into your hands, lifting your forehead off the mat and walk your hands back towards you, coming up nice and slow. We're gonna come up onto the knees. And then with care, take your right foot forward between the hands. Your feet should be about hip width distance apart. Coming to a 90 degree angle in the front knee. And uh, with the left leg straight out behind you, kind of sinking into the hips here. You can uh, use blocks to press you up further um, if sinking into the, the hips with your hands on the ground is just a little too intense for you. And you can play around with the different levels of the blocks. Um, if you don't have blocks, you can maybe use um, some, like stack up some books or use just things around the house that'll help lift you up a little bit. Otherwise, you can come onto your hands and then even to take that a step further, you could come onto your elbows. That will really be up to you and the flexibility that's available to you. Remember, we are going to be in this position for a few minutes, so you want to um, not push yourself too far where it's going to be hurting and you're going to want to come out of it. And of course, if that does happen where, where it gets too intense and I haven't pulled you out of the pose yet, just back off and lessen the intensity. Maybe start using the blocks or something if you're not already. Try and relax the neck. Let go of any tension in the legs. Just a minor amount of effort put into holding yourself up with your arms. Letting go everywhere else. You might find as the muscles loosen up, you can go a little further into the pose. Of course, that is optional.
slowly press up out of the pose. Coming onto your hands first, bending into that back leg, straightening the front leg. Bring the right leg back to meet the left. Maybe take a couple little hip circles here before we come on to the other side. Now taking the left foot forward between the hands. Bending into the front knee, finding that 90 degree angle, and then you can adjust the back leg forward or back till you find that comfortable position for you. If you bring it a little bit more forward, that's going to lessen the intensity. You might find that helpful, especially if you don't have blocks. Remember, we're gonna be here for a couple minutes, so no rush, start off um, at the top. where you are not as low down, you're not as um, into the pose. And then slowly sink into the pose over a period of time. So you're not pushing yourself into the position before your muscles are stretched out. And release the engagement in the legs. Slowly pressing up out of the position, straightening the front leg, bending the back leg. Bring that left foot back to meet the right. We can take a couple of uh, hip circles again. Try to rock back and forth to release some of that energy in the hips. We're gonna do a modified version of Sleeping Swan or uh, what would be considered, I'm blanking. Anyway, sleeping swan in yin. So if you have sleeping swan in your practice and you wanna take that, um, perfect. You, we're gonna start on the right side first. Your uh, left leg straight out behind you, um, squaring the hips and releasing down. 
If that is not in your practice or you have limited hip flexibility, I would suggest doing the modified version, especially since I'm not there to correct your alignment, where you lie on your back and take the right ankle on top of the left knee, just um, above where the kneecap is here. Flex the right foot, so bringing the toes towards the shin. And then either with your hands, if you can reach without your shoulders coming up off the ground, pulling the left leg slightly in until you feel that sensation right here and stopping. Or if your shoulders are coming up off of the ground in order to do this, um, you can take a strap or a scarf and loop it through this uh, triangle here behind the knee and then hold on to that. And what I'm going to do, if you have a wall nearby, I, I welcome you to do this as well, is place the left foot up on the wall and um, you can create the resistance you need by moving your pelvis further or closer to the wall to get the stretch in the left, or sorry, the right hip here. Remember keeping the right foot flexed. As far as the left foot, that one can be relaxed.
slowly releasing, taking the right foot down away from your knee. And then I'm just gonna show the full version of sleeping swollen on the left side as well. Then I'll um, join anyone who wants to do the modified version. So coming onto your knees, if you're doing a full version, recommended if you have a greater hip flexibility, taking the left foot forward, dropping the shin down and the knee down and bringing the right leg straight out behind you. Now the hip should be squared here, so they sh um, you shouldn't have the one hip bolt like up like this or the other way around where your um, left hip is high off the ground. So you can move your foot in towards your groin and that'll help you square the hips, um, maybe without having to use a block. And if your uh, one hip is still high up off the ground, you can scooch a block or a pillow underneath that butt cheek to um, square the hips. Now for the modified version, you have the option to lie down on your back on your mat, take the left foot and the outside of the left ankle on top right above the right kneecap, flexing the left foot so the toes are coming towards the shin, taking your hands one side on either side of the right leg and clasping behind the right knee. Um, of course, if your shoulders are coming up off the mat in order to reach, you can use a scarf or a rope or some sort of strap to hold your knee up. And if you do not have any props, and this is nice even if you do have them and, you're, and you have a wall nearby, you can place your right foot on the wall and either come forward towards the wall or push away from the wall slightly till you find um, the sweet spot for you and you'll feel the nice stretch in the left outer hip and the left butt cheek. Remembering to keep the left foot flexed here.
slowly releasing the left foot off of the knee or pushing, if you're in sleeping swan, pushing your hands up and swinging the right foot around to meet the left. We're gonna come into frog pose. So if you have pillows nearby, I would suggest pausing and grabbing them unless you have blocks, or you can also roll up the edges of your mat. Just something to put underneath the inside of your knee so that it's not um, painful at all. You're gonna take your knees out wide. and have your lower limbs directly straight out. Like you can see, you're straight out from the knee. It should form a 90 degree angle. I'm just gonna use my blocks here. Flex the foot outwards, and then you can Stay up on your hands to press the, the hips back towards the wall behind you. You can stay up on your hands or you can come down onto your forearms. Just make sure that um, you're not going too far into this pose. It's very intense. To decrease the intensity, you can come up higher on your hands, maybe even press some books underneath, and you can bring your heels closer together. And if you have a bolster, just thinking about this, if you have a bolster um, to place underneath, uh, lengthwise along your mat, underneath your chest, and you can lay down on the bolster and relax your neck, that would be super juicy and super nice in this pose. Once you have the position, release all muscular engagement other than what you need to hold yourself up. Ideally, having pillows and blankets stacked underneath uh, your torso here um, is going to help you relax the most in this pose. You can always pause, go grab your props and come back.
All right, slowly coming out of frog. So taking our heels towards one another, pressing ourselves up and taking the weight off of our knees. We're gonna end this practice with a nice counter stretch to get the outside of the hips this time. And then we'll go into Shavasana. So I'm gonna face you so you can see here. It's kind of like an extreme cross leg position. We're gonna do shoelace. So taking the left knee bent on the bottom, we're gonna bend the right knee and we're gonna cross it over top of the left as far as you can go. So if that means you're like this, that's perfectly fine. Just kind of get to that edge for yourself. And you should really feel this on the outer edge of your hip bones here. You can either stay just sitting here. Uh, I feel this is quite intense already. If you want to take it a step further, you can walk your hands out and um, lay down and relax and lay into the position. It's really up to you.
slowly press into the hands, walk them back towards yourself. Unwind the legs. Maybe windshield wiper them back and forth a couple times before we go into the other side. Now we're gonna bend the right leg and place that one on the bottom. Place the left leg on top, bending the knee and bringing ourselves as close to the midline as possible. Of course, it's not gonna be possible for everybody. Um, don't beat yourself up about it. This is a nice way to start and it might just be what, where you are the whole time. Um, nice stretch, massage hips here. And then as the muscles loosen up, you can think about slowly moving forward and down as an option. You might um, want to place prop, maybe some pillows or something in between, or maybe just come down just enough and use a block on its high setting to support your neck and head. That's really up to you. You can play around with it if you important is that you're letting go of the tension our muscles are hanging on for dear life sometimes really holding tightness um, in these poses and the, the longer you're in it you can especially if you focus on it you can feel it like letting go really letting go of some of that tension in the muscles Slowly pressing into your hands and walking them towards yourself. You can unwind the legs. Take some windshield wipers again if you'd like. Kind of wiggle the hips side to side. And we're going to end off in Shavasana. So you can slowly lower down onto your back with grace and ease. 
Take your legs out wide to the side. Let them drop open. Let your arms fall open, palms facing the ceiling. Letting everything go here, relaxing. And final rest, corpse pose, asana. Close off the eyes. Slowly wiggle your fingers and toes. Take a nice deep stretch overhead. Breathe in. Exhale as you roll over to the right side. Press yourself up to a seated position. Ah, that was awesome. Thank you so much for joining me on my mat today, yogis. I hope you found this helpful and really got some nice deep stretches in your hips. Um, as far as that card, I didn't wanna to go too much detail in it so you're overthinking it while you're doing your practice, but parental care, um, with that being really associated with all of the chakras really and, and what has either blocked or, or made them overactive, it is extremely interesting. And um, the book, uh, Eastern, no, sorry, Western Body, Eastern Mind, I'll link it in the description below, goes into a lot of detail on a psychological standpoint from a psychologist who wrote about how each chakra is affected by our upbringing and our, our conditioning, our social conditioning. So if that interests you and you feel that some of your chakras are out of alignment, definitely give that book a check out and think about your child, into your childhood, uh, what the beliefs were about sexuality and emotions and relation to other people and see how that affects the view uh, that you have in the world today. Thank you so much. Looking forward to seeing you next week when we go into the um, I'm blanking here. Solar plexus chakra. <laughs> Sorry, the third chakra, the solar plexus chakra. Um, have a wonderful day, yogis. Namaste.